Welcome to the Video Edit Suite tutorial series. In this tutorial you are going to learn how to set up and film with the Sony HD cameras. The first step is to set up the tripod. Remove the cord from around the bottom of the tripod. Spread the legs of the tripod until the plastic struts lie on the ground. Loosen the extension legs by turning the locks on the legs. Extend the legs to your required height and lock the legs. <laughs> Loosen the ball joint under the top of the tripod and use the spirit level to align the camera parallel to the floor. Now that the tripod is set up, it's time to look at the camera. The camera bag contains a camera with tripod shoe attached, two camera batteries, big and small, a battery charger, a mains adapter for the camera, a firewire cable, a manual, and a list showing the contents of the bag. Usually the big battery will be in the camera. Now you must place the camera on the tripod. Ensure the correct shoe is on the camera. Unscrew the lock nut and push back the metal fastener. Then push in the button on the left and slide in the camera from the back of the tripod and tighten the lock nut. Now you must turn on the camera and open the lens cover. Press in the grey button on the right side of the camera and push it upwards to turn on the camera in camera mode. The lens cover can be opened by flipping the switch on the front of the camera. Before you start filming, you must insert your tape. Pull the slide on the side of the camera back to open the tape deck. The carriage will automatically open for you to insert the tape. Put the tape in head first with the spools facing into the camera and push the side of the carriage in. The camera will do the rest. Simply close the side of the camera when it is finished. Tapes should be blanked before use in order to ensure the tape is free from timecode breaks. Next you must select the recording and capturing formats. To do this you must enter the menus. Push the menu button on the back of the camera and use the silver wheel to navigate. Push the wheel in to select. The options are located in the in-out menu, which is represented by two arrows in the main menu. The two most important functions are zoom and focus. The zoom can be controlled by either the ring second from the front of the camera, or by the levers on the top handle and the right side of the camera. You can toggle between zooming with the ring and the levers with the switch on the side of the camera. You can change the speed of the top lever with the switch on the right of the top handle. This switch has high, low and off settings. The high and low settings can be changed in the menus. You can switch between automatic and manual focus with the switch on the side of the camera. This switch also allows you to go to infinite focus. When in automatic, the camera will always focus on whatever is in the centre of the shot. When in manual, the focus can be controlled by the front ring of the camera. If you are trying to focus on something far from the camera, you can press the expanded focus button beside the zoom lever on the right of the camera. This zooms in on the shot in the viewfinder so that you can achieve a sharper focus. For the next functions there are three overall modes the camera can be in. Auto lock, in which all of the functions are handled automatically. Auto man, where you can switch between automatic and manual at your choosing. And hold, where your settings in auto man are saved and cannot be changed. The switch for this is located just under the tape deck, on the right side of the camera. The buttons to the left of this are what allow you to change between automatic and manual in auto man mode. From left to right, the buttons control iris, gain, shutter speed and white balance. In order to fine tune your visual style, you will need to make use of these functions. Most of them will change the brightness of the image and many of them will also change another aspect of the video. First, the neutral density filter. The control for this is found on the side of the camera just in front of the focus controls. Off is the default and will not affect the video. One introduces a filter which will darken the video moderately. Two introduces another filter which will darken the video significantly. Next is iris. This will affect the amount of light getting to the sensor by opening or closing the aperture behind the lens. You can control this with the silver dial located on the left side of the camera. You can see the f-stop number on the viewfinder when iris is in manual. As the number decreases, the aperture opens, allowing more light in and decreasing the depth of field. Gain is a tool that can be used to increase the brightness if no other tool is working. The controls for the gain can be found just behind the iris dial. The settings H, M and L can be changed by navigating to the gain setup in the camera settings menu by pressing the menu button. There are seven choices from zero to 18 decibels. Zero is no change and 18 decibels multiplies the brightness by eight. The shutter speed is the amount of time light is let through to the sensor for each frame. This ranges from one third of a second all the way down to one ten thousandth of a second. The control for this is the same silver wheel that is used for scrolling through the menus. Slower shutter speeds will allow more light in at the expense of blurring motion. 
White balance is the way the camera balances the red, green and blue levels of the video. The white balance switch is located behind the gain switch. The first option is a predefined setting, either indoor or outdoor, which can be chosen in the menu. The option is WB preset in the camera settings menu. Normally you will want to set your own white balance, and the A and B settings allow you to do just this. With the camera pointed at where you will be shooting, you will need to hold a white sheet such that it fills the frame, and is also lit by the same light as what you are shooting. Then simply set the switch to A or B and press the white balance button to set the white balance. The symbol on the viewfinder will flash momentarily and then stop once the white balance has been set. When changing these settings, it is useful to be able to see where the image is too bright. Thankfully, there is a setting which will highlight sections which are blown out. If you want to check to make sure your video isn't too bright, you can have the camera warn you by switching on zebra patterns. This switch is found at the back of the camera. Simply push it to the left to turn them on. With all the functions set, you are now ready to shoot high quality videos in high definition. To start recording, press one of the record buttons either on the top handle of the camera or on the right side beside the power switch. The camera will usually need a second or two to prepare for recording. Press either of the record buttons again to stop recording. When you are finished recording, you must power down the camera. Remember to eject the tape, close the lens cap and viewfinder and replace the camera in the case correctly. That is the end of the first Sony HD camera tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will cover audio settings.